X-Men Apocalypse is still currently playing at various theaters, yet the first speculations and rumors concerning the direction the franchise might take in the future have already surfaced. We decided to take a closer look at the movie and narrowed it down to five references that may or may not hint at events that might take place further down the road. That having been said, this video will contain spoilers for X-Men Apocalypse. You have been warned, mother and son, an iconic mutant from the original trilogy, marks his return as his younger self in X-Men Apocalypse, Nightcrawler. In the movie, Mystique, a personal hero for him, locates, rescues and brings him to the professor before training him herself. This could be a reference to the fact that the both of them are related to one another in the comic books. Raven is Kurt's mother. We were also introduced to his father before, who is none other than Azazel, the mutant who originally belonged to the Hellfire Club in X-Men First Class. Due to Bolivar Trask and his experiments, Azazel lost his life. The seemingly too small age difference between mother and son could be explained with the fact that Mystique ages slower than normal human beings, as we learned in first class. You already know me, son. No! Proteus. After being absent for the events of Days of Future Past, Moira McTaggart reappears in X-Men Apocalypse. Aside from the renewed relationship between her and Charles, we also learn that during the past 10 years, Moira became a mother and left her husband. This could be a subtle hint at the Proteus saga. During this story, Moira becomes unwillingly pregnant after being raped by her villainous husband, Joseph McTaggart. Her son is born with supernatural abilities. Kevin McTaggart, later known as Proteus, is capable of manipulating reality itself. He also takes over other people's bodies that he eventually exhausts, killing his host only to look for a new body. In order to protect herself and others from her son, Moira puts him under arrest, referring to him from this point on as Mutant X. Dark Phoenix. Since X-Men Apocalypse takes place in the 80s, the audience is introduced to younger versions of our core mutants. First and foremost, Jean Grey, who even in this alternate timeline has a strong relationship with Charles, discovers Wolverine and immediately gravitates towards Scott Summers. The most interesting scene for us, however, is her intervention in the battle against Apocalypse. While releasing her powers, a firebird can be seen. Every true X-Men fan sees this as a clear hint at the Dark Phoenix saga in which Jean is exposed to cosmic radiation resulting in her using the full potential of her abilities. In the comic books, the members of the Hellfire Club manipulate the all-powerful Jean, who as a result develops a second dark personality the Dark Phoenix. I am Phoenix. Since most fans were more than unsatisfied with the way this iconic story had been portrayed in X-Men The Last Stand, now could be a good time to retell it. This time around, we would already know that Jean would survive this saga, since she can be seen safe and sound in the future at the end of X-Men Days of Future Past. I love you. X-23 while being held captive by Colonel Stryker, our heroes re-encounter or actually are introduced for the very first time, yes, timelines are confusing, to Weapon X, better known as Wolverine. <laughs> During a post credit scene, a mysterious man in suit can be seen taking blood samples from Wolverine in order to conduct further experiments. These experiments might involve none other than the female clone of Wolverine, X-23. After 22 failed attempts, the first functional clone of Wolverine emerges. Equipped with adamantium claws in both hands and feet, as well as the healing ability of her blood relative, she escapes the test lavatory. While at first being degraded as a weapon through mind control, Laura Kinney soon becomes a hero as she joins the X-Force. I'm the one person on this planet who understands you. <laughs> Mr. Sinister, the already mentioned before mysterious figure who confiscates Wolverine's blood samples acts on behalf of the so-called Essex Corporation, which is run by none other than Nathaniel Essex, who will later be known as Mr. Sinister. My name is Sinister, Mr. Sinister. Nathaniel Essex was already born in 1859 and possesses an unnatural long life due to his mutation. Throughout the years, he also became one of Apocalypse's horsemen and as such gained even more abilities. Among them are energy projection, telekinesis 
and shape-shifting. As a fanatical Darwinist, he is interested in a society of only the strongest, which makes him one of the X-Men's most dangerous enemies. You dare come after me? Obsessed with Jean Grey and Scott Summers, he created a clone of Jean in order for her to mate with Scott. The result was Kevin Summers, better known as Cable, who will be introduced in the sequel to Deadpool. Oh, I'm touching myself tonight. What do you think of these possibilities? And what would you like to see unravel in the next X-Men movie? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you want to know more about Thor Ragnarok or why Odin might be to blame for the entire MCU, make sure to check out these videos.